Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has asked NATO allies to provide the country with more weapons, saying that the courage of Ukrainian people cannot be the only defense against Russian aggression. In an extraordinary session of Ukraine NATO Council, Zelensky said Ukraine needs at least seven more Patriot systems or similar anti-aircraft missile systems, saying that they can save a lot of lives and make a real difference. Zelensky reminded that there have been discussions about the deliver of a million artillery shells for Ukraine and these shells must be finally delivered to the front line. Furthermore, the Ukrainian leader called for the provision of long-range missiles and aircraft. If we have a coalition of fighters, then we need a sufficient number of aircraft to actually overcome the Russian air fleet. It is not a matter of the number of promises, but the actual number of aircraft in the sky, he said. Zelensky asked the Allies to speed up the delivery of these weapons. Reminding that almost 1,200 Russian missiles, including aero-ballistic ones, as well as more than 1,500 Shahids were fired at Ukraine just from the start of the year, Zelensky said, the courage of our people cannot be the only defense against drones and missiles. Our positions on the battlefield need real protection. Ukraine did not ask to send your soldiers. Ukrainians hold the front line on their own. Furthermore, Zelensky said, Putin must be brought down from heaven to earth, and our sky must become protected again. This is real and completely depends on your choice. Choosing whether you treat all partners equally. Choosing whether we are truly allies. Georgia risks sliding into Russia's orbit the country may become another Belarus. Katya Dekanoidze, head of Russia's parliamentary opposition, spoke in an interview with NV Radio about the controversial foreign agent bill and the threats it poses to Georgia. If the bill passes, it may create a barrier to Georgia's EU and NATO aspirations, according to Dekanoidze. Georgian citizens, especially the younger generation, call this bill Russian because Russia had the same past one in 2012, she said. They recognized as foreign agents such people as Alexei Navalny, Ivan Zadanov, who were then either killed by Russian President Vladimir Putin or they left Russia. Therefore, I think that what awaits Georgia is, if the bill is passed, is becoming another Belarus, where people realize that no democracy can take root. If the parliament supports the bill in the third reading, the Georgian people's resistance will be very serious, Dekanoidze suggested. I'm sure that Georgians won't live under a dictator like Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko, she said. It's not a question of domestic politics. It's a question of where we're going. I'm absolutely certain that the oligarch who controls the ruling Dream Party, Bidzina Ivanishvili, wants to take over Georgia just like, but I don't think he'll get away with that. After the Georgian government submitted another draft of the bill to the parliament in April, mass protests against the controversial legislation have taken place across the country. Georgia's parliament gave initial approval to a bill on foreign agents that the European Union said risked blocking the country's path to membership. The fate of the bill is widely seen as a test of whether Georgia, 33 years after the collapse of the Soviet Union, intends to pursue a path of integration with the West or move closer towards Russia. As many as 10,000 opponents of the bill gathered outside the parliament sitting atop cars and buildings a day after police used pepper spray to clear protesters away from part of the building. Several thousand protesters moved over to the government building, heavily guarded by police, to demand a meeting with Prime Minister Irakli Kobakidze, the bill's principal backer. Russia destroys nearly all Ukraine's thermal generation nuclear power plants at risk. Russia has destroyed almost all of Ukraine's thermal power generation. A threat to Ukrainian nuclear power plants is not ruled out, according to the Ukrainian president Volodymyr Zelensky, during a special meeting of the European Council. Russia has already destroyed almost all of our thermal power generation. Dams and equipment of hydroelectric power plants, as well as gas infrastructure, are under terrorist attacks, he said. Zelensky stresses that the Russian invaders do not give up radiation blackmail and continue to play savagely with the safety of the occupied Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. The head of state does not rule out that other Ukrainian nuclear power plants could also be under threat. We do not rule out that the infrastructure of our other nuclear power plants and distribution networks are also under threat 
from Russian terror, the president emphasizes. After a long pause, Russian troops have resumed shelling Ukraine's energy sector. Russians are attacking Ukrainian substations and thermal power generation. For example, the Zemiv thermal power plant in the Kharkiv region was seriously damaged. On April the 11th, the Tripilia thermal power plant in Kiev region was also destroyed. In addition, the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine warned that Russians are preparing false flag provocations at Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Russia is the only terrorist in the world holding a nuclear power plant hostage and using it to blackmail Ukraine and the entire world. No one else but Russian terrorists has brought the world so close to the brink of a deliberate radiation catastrophe. These are deliberate Russian actions, continuing the Russian practice of blackmailing our state and the entire international community with the risk of a catastrophe at Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Ukraine has always taken and continues to take a responsible approach to the safety of nuclear facilities, the general staff stated. This is Europe's largest nuclear power plant, which was occupied at the beginning of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine.